Good morning. I'm sorry I can't be with you this morning. I'm in Fort Lauderdale looking at ultrasound simulators. But I wanted to introduce a new course as part of our resident core curriculum. This course is a patient, and saf patient safety and quality course, and uh, it is designed following the ACOG OBGYN uh, patient safety and quality manual. Quality and safety is not just one uh, lecture every once in a while. We've got a number of components built into it, and they follow the ACGME core competencies. So first is the morbidity, morbidity and mortality conference, which we will continue to do semi-monthly, and that's both, both practice-based learning and improvement and systems-based practice. We have scheduled this year an increase in simulation activities for both patient care and interpersonal communication skills. This fall, Dr. Tyson will be, become a certified instructor in advanced life support and obstetrics, or also, and he will begin teaching that course uh, as soon as he is able to in the fall during our simulation time. We are going to have a fetal monitoring course um, by GE. The interns already went through this course as part of their boot camp experience, and we found it uh, of enough quality that we're going to be getting it for all the residents. We've done some education about event reporting and we'll continue to do so. And then we will have this quality and safety didactic series, and that'll be every other month covering medical knowledge and systems-based practice. The learning objectives are to understand the discipline of patient safety and its role in minimizing the incidence and impact of adverse events, as well as maximizing recovery from them. Second learning objective is to understand the discipline of quality care as it relates to women's health. While that is quite a mouthful, the bottom line is that by learning about quality care, identifying the gaps in that care, we will be able to make an impact on patient safety. The outline of the didactic course is as follows. We will meet bimonthly, approximately six times a year. Presentations will be made by myself, Tom Diller, the new vice chair of quality when they are named, and any other faculty that want to participate. Sessions will focus on quality and safety, including processes, processes to study issues, gain experience with the tools of risk management, such as Lean and Six Sigma, and we'll do some activities to solve some problems. By way of background, in 2000, the Institute of Medicine published a report to Air as Human. Lucian Leap was a physician who led that report, and he talked about 44,000 to 98,000 deaths annually due to medical errors, and that was a 3.7 percent error rate. To put that in perspective, more people die each year from medical errors than during the entire Vietnam War or from motor vehicle accidents or breast cancer annually. The Institute of Medicine report Crossing the Quality Chasm came out in 2001, and they aired, added six aims for improvement. The first was just being safe, avoiding injury to patients from the care that is intended to help them. The second was being effective, providing services based on scientific knowledge to all who could benefit, and refrain from providing services to, to those not likely to benefit, essentially avoiding underuse and overuse. The third was that our care should be patient-centered, providing care that is respectful and responsive to individual patient preferences, needs, and values, and assuring that patient values glide, guide all clinical decisions. The fourth aim is to be timely, reducing waits and sometimes harmful delays for both those who receive care and those who give care. The fifth aim is to be efficient avoiding waste, including wasting equipment, supplies, ideas, and energy. And finally, the sixth the aim is for care to be equitable, providing care that does not vary in quality because of personal characteristics such as gender, ethnicity, ethnicity geographic location, and socioeconomic status. In 2004, the Institute of Medicine published a new report, Patient Safety Achieving a New Standard of Care and they define patient safety as the prevention of harm to patients. Now the 
AHQR, or the Agency for Healthcare Quality and Research, is a quasi-governmental agency. And they have a lot to do with a term called culture of safety. And they've defined that as a commitment to safety that permeates all levels of an organization, from front-like personnel, like residents, nurses, phlebotomists, IP team members, to the executive management, the vice presidents, the department chairman, the CEO, and all those in the corporate suite. The features of a culture of safety include acknowledgement of the high-risk, error-prone nature of organizational activities, a blame-free environment where individuals are able to report errors or close calls without fear of reprimand or punishment, an expectation of collaboration across all ranks to seek solutions to vulnerabilities, and finally, a willingness on the part of the organization to direct resources for addressing safety concerns. So we're going to spend some time doing an exercise. How many chiefs are in the room? Each chief is a team captain and starting in alphabetical order by last name of the chief, go ahead and pick a team. Okay, depending on how many chiefs there are, these are going to be your, your assignments. So if alphabetically you're first, you're going to do OB. If there's two residents, group one does OB and group two does GYN. Three residents, OB, GYN, clinic, and so on, as you can see here. I don't think there's going to be five residents because someone has to be on labor and delivery. And I don't think there's going to be four residents because, because I th believe Sarah's away. So hopefully there's three chiefs in the room, one doing OB, one doing GYN, and the third one leading their group in doing clinic. So split into your groups. We're going to take about 10 minutes. Chiefs, I need you to choose a scribe, and your goal is for your area to brainstorm a list of patient safety issues, but we only want problems right now, not solutions. So ready, go. Okay, so now that we're ready to come back together as a group, I need the chiefs to uh, pick a reporter from their group, return to your seats, and beginning with group one, the reporter should list the patient safety concerns that were identified. The chief of each group should moderate a discussion to add or subtract from that list, and the scribe should keep adding to that list. That should take about 15 minutes. So go ahead and start that. Finally, the last part of the exercise, the scribes want to turn their list in to Brenda. The list generated today will be used to direct future conferences and M&Ms, direct the activities of departmental work groups to improve patient quality and safety, and direct quality improvement projects as mandated by the OBGYN RRC. So in conclusion, this culture of safety includes patient safety, risk management, quality improvement, and a high rely reliability organization. High reliability organizations are typically things like the aircraft industry or the nuclear power industry where any disaster, any mistake, could lead to a widespread disaster affecting many people. In medicine, we typically only affect one patient at a time and their families when we have an error but we need to be as highly reliable as we can be, similar to the airline and nuclear industries. So we're going to use this time every other month to learn about safety and quality in the healthcare setting. We will use the lists generated from your activity today to improve the GHS safety culture. And finally, thank you for hanging in there today with me as an absentee teacher.